Hello, welcome back to the Farmyard Garden. If you're new here, my name is Claire, and if you're not new here, thank you for joining me again. It's been a sad week on the farm. Our beloved dog, Bess, unfortunately had to be put to sleep yesterday. We are privileged to have had 16 wonderful years with the goodest of good dogs, and she went to sleep like all good dogs deserve to go to sleep that final time, peacefully, and knowing that she was loved and had a full belly. So, sorry if I appear a little bit emotional, we all get sad, don't we, when we lose our pets. Anyway, in today's episode, I'm going to plant out my Bellotti beans. I have some more peas to put out. There's more beans and peas to harvest. I'm going to take some salad leaves from the red salad bowl as well. And, well, we'll just have to see what else there is to do, won't we? Let's have a look at this dahlia first. Look at her. Isn't she absolutely beautiful? She's called Claire Obscure, bought for obvious reasons. And, oh. She's absolutely delightful. I did expect dahlias to have a bit more scent than they have. I don't know whether I'm simply immune to the scent or whether they really don't have much scent, but oh, she's still a delight to look at. But she's not the most exciting thing that's come into flower this week. Look at that. The local agricultural merchant that seems to have become a garden centre this last few months actually had some dwarf straw flowers in the other day. So of course I had to buy them all and they're already in flower, so isn't it just magical? To me, it's just the most tactile thing ever. I can't stop stroking them. Apparently they dry really well as well. They don't lose their color when they're drying, so they make great displays if you want some dried flower displays. I can't wait for the other ones to come out now. Obviously, they're not the only plants that I bought while I was there, so maybe I'll just show you what the polytunnel planters look like. Bought some antirrhinums as well, a couple of salvias, and this little beauty that's been sat outside in all weather, so not looking overly happy, is a Needles and Pins Calendula. Look at that. Beautiful. Now this is a new bean wigwam that I put up the other week, and I was so proud of myself for taking the time to actually string it myself instead of buying a ready-made piece of string to just fasten on. And then I realised that that's another mistake that I've made because beans don't need the netting, do they? They just needed to be planted around the poles at the bottom. Right, it's pretty secure. Let's get these beans in. These are my climbing bolotto, as you can see. They are far too big being these root trainers, really. I did bring them out of the polytunnel and just shoved them underneath one of the cloches outside because these poor things can't win. They're too hot in the day in the polytunnel, probably a little bit too cold outside at night, but they don't seem to be doing too bad. A little bit of yellowing in places on the leaves, but we're just going to plant them in the ground and just see how they do. I'm going to put a couple to each pole, one on the inside and the one on the outside. I think it's probably been a little bit too late to get them out. I've waited a while because we're having some crazy temperatures, aren't we? absolute madness it's not been as cold overnight this week as it was last week but I have to say it's only been marginally better because we've gone down to 5.6 in the polytunnel problem is it's then nearly 40 degrees in the day it's just crazy that's such a huge fluctuation for our four plants isn't it even the horses seem confused I'm sure they're putting up their winter coats already it's really exciting getting these things filled up. Seeing more and more green appear around the plot. Although I'm saying more and more green, everything seems to be going yellow, but you know, we'll gloss over that. Oh, I don't know if they'll separate, so let's just put you in like that. I don't want to damage the roots trying to pull them apart, so they might as well just go in together like that. Now I have to say I'm a bit confused myself now because these were labelled on a packet as climbing bolotto beans and these were labelled on a packet as bolotti beans and I thought they were the same thing and again these are very yellow. I mean they deserved, they deserve a lot better than me having left them in the seed trays for so long but it was just so cold overnight that I should have potted them on really but anyway I didn't so what's done is done but 
I just assumed that it was different ways of spelling it because some were an Italian packet and some were UK packaging. And I don't know now, look, the leaves are very, very different. So I was thinking of putting all these together around this wigwam, but I'm not sure that I should. So I think what I'm actually going to do is put these on the main garden where I made a bit of a, a frame there. That's where they were supposed to go anyway. And then I thought that they were such pretty pods that I wanted them on the plot. So I've got the best of both worlds now anyway, haven't I? So yeah, we'll go and do them shortly. So I'll leave them there for a bit. But what's next? Peas. I've got some more peas to put out. I'm going to put the next row of peas in here using another side off of one of the wire mesh compost bins that are used for the leaf mulch collection. So I'm going to put that here, but I've run out of these smaller stakes and I only have the really big sort of eight foot ones now. So what I'm going to do is, this is like an online confession, I'm going to steal some smaller or shorter, should I say, stakes off my sister's plot. We're going garden shopping at the weekend, so I can always buy her some more back, but I want to get them in the ground now and I'm sure she won't mind, so I'm sorry Jo, but it gives us the opportunity to go and have a little nose through her plot as we wander down to the compost bin because quite a lot of you have been asking how she's been getting on and I do have permission to show you a little bit of her plot so let's go and get these steaks just going past my carrot boxes now look at them those straight lines they really do please me those ones were sown in March and they're my parsnips and look at them I'm really thrilled with them never grown parsnips before so this is a first for me. When I thin them out, they did seem to be quite straight. Anyway, I'm just heading on to my sister's plot, so I'll flip you around. Everything on her plot is doing really, really well. She should be so proud of herself, her and Emily. They've worked so hard. It's looking brilliant. It's a baked potato squash there. Potatoes, alderman peas. Doing well, hers are flowering. It has been noted that mine aren't flowering yet. And look at her sweet corn. Mine looks nothing like that. Mine is a sad, sorry sweet corn. Her sweet corn's amazing. I don't know whether it's because it's sheltered by the shed and the hedge, but look at it. I'm not jealous at all, honest. And while we're talking about things of hers that are doing a lot better, you've just seen my pea bed. Now look at hers. What? Look at them. It's like a pea hedge. Can't get over how well they're doing. This is my sister's carrot box and she's got a few parsnips in there a few more of the many 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 potato buckets that joe and emily have this is her flower corner of the bean or the binia i can't remember which it is now obviously that's a huge hollyhock coming there and her as labeled cornucopia of sweet peas that's a lot of sweet peas but the colors on them they're absolutely beautiful look at those lola rosso that reminds me, I need to sow some Lola Rosso. Absolutely love it. And do you know why I love it even more? Because the slugs don't like it. So if you're struggling to grow lettuces that aren't being eaten by slugs, Lola Rosso, they're the ones for you. And the red salad bowl. If you don't put it out too early, the red salad bowl do well as well against the slugs. That's my top tip of the day. Look at those strawberries. Can't remember what they're called now, but beautiful pink flowers on them. I need to get myself some of those. Oh, and she's got ripe strawberries too. That's good because they're coming tonight, so they can pick those. This is affectionately known as the egg. Me and Emily built this. I just poke you inside there. There's lots of things growing away nicely in here. And then look at these sunflowers here. I got her back for putting a cucamelon in the back of the polytunnel because she doesn't actually like sunflowers. She's not a lover of yellow flowers. I don't like yellow vegetables and she doesn't like yellow flowers. So I stuck these sunflowers in this bed here and look at them. None of mine look that good. It's like sweet revenge, isn't it? And then this that Joe has growing here is a crimson patio peach tree. Look at the foliage on it. Absolutely gorgeous. It's so striking. It's supposed to be adapted to the UK climate and fully hardy for our winters. I'll just pop you in her greenhouse door. This is Tomato Central and her cucamelons there. Freddie, if you're watching, that's my sister's cucamelons. So basically, sibling rivalry now extends to the fact that her plants are far better than mine. Anyway, back of the compost bin here are where these smaller stakes are that I'm going to steal. Thank you, Joe, Emily. 
Let's take these back. Oh, I could have done that all the way down, couldn't I? Just threaded it in. Why didn't I think of that sooner? Genius. I don't even know why it just came to me to do it now. This variety is called Waver X, which is a petit pois. Now, I know I'm not going to be self-sufficient in petit pois, like those nice frozen bags I buy from the supermarket. But I'm still extremely excited to taste super fresh ones from my own plot will they make it into the house or will they end up being picked out here and eaten who knows but either way i'm very excited by it i water these every day in the polytunnel but it's just so hot and dry in there that while well, they've been struggling So how are your peas doing? Let me know. Maybe you didn't sow any. But if you did, I'd love to know which ones you've sown. And actually, I need to look if there's any that I can sow again for another crop later on. So I'd be really grateful if any of you have any suggestions of ones that I can sow still now because I haven't looked that up yet. Hmm. You can smell peas. Oh. I feel a bit like a cannibal. I look at things like this when I'm putting them out and I have to remind myself that I grew those from seeds. You know, I did that. Nothing against buying plug plant starts. You know, I, I bought a few myself, but there's something extra special about knowing that you put those seeds in the ground and now look at them, they're kind of flourishing. You may wonder why I'm not using my Hori Hori for this job. Well, so am I. That would be because I've lost it. It's got to be in the side of one of the beds somewhere, but I can't find it. So if you spot it on the way around, please put it in the comments. Let me know where it is. Oh! My alderman peas are in flower. Oh, they're such delicate flowers. Huh, do you smell? Not particularly. You're very pretty still. So are they the last peas that I'm gonna sow for 2024? I'm not sure. I'm waiting on you letting me know. I'm gonna check the comments out in a second, but so far so good let's move on to something else because it's exciting more things to plant out and these are more squash plants i've got three of these and they're probably too big to put three of them in this bed but i'm going to squash them in because pa, squash i'm going to squash the squash in because why not I've been really looking forward to growing these actually and I mean look at them they're doing so well in such small pots they really need to be in the ground now though but these are supposed to taste like potatoes now I'm growing the variety called mashed potato which has the white skin my sister's growing the variety called baked potato which is basically the same inside and the taste is the same but hers look like jacket potatoes because they've got a darker skin so it'd be quite nice to see the mix between the two and I'm pretty sure my sister and I will swap and share well I hope we will I'm not going to put any extra fertilizer in here because this is 
full of quite old manure, but it was heavily filled with straw. So that's why it looks quite light still. Decent roots again on that. I mean, this one was in too small a pot, really. I do have a little bit of strulch I've just been distracted. All the geese are playing on the pond. Let me just show you them. The goslings are really cute. Look at them all. Oh, look at that one, what it's doing there. They're so funny. Huh. There's quite a few families on here. Seem to have a lot of playtime and look at them. Oh, they make me laugh. They're so sassy. I love it when the goslings copy them. Oh, I could watch them all day. Aren't they brilliant? Anyway, where were we? Strulch. So I'm going to put some more strulch around these, but as an experiment, what I thought I might do, because I've not had any trouble with the other pumpkins being taken, I thought I might put it around in a ring around this one and maybe this one but then leave that one and just see if we have any slug damage on the one that doesn't have any strulch around it this is about as good as it gets for me doing an experiment it also is because i don't actually have much strulch left so it's just going to be a little thin ring in fact it might only be around one of them oh yeah i've definitely only got enough to put around one Oh, and that's going to have to be a thin layer because I've run out. I've made the ring quite wide so it's not touching the leaves. Well, let's just see if this one has less damage than the others or maybe none of them will have any damage. We'll have to see. I'm going to harvest some broad beans again now and it made me think about this wonderful community of great gardeners and clever souls that are behind the camera for me now. Yes, I'm talking about you because one of you, Jane Newley, I think you signed yourself as Jinxie, gave me this great tip that obviously I didn't know about because I've never grown them before and that is that broad beans are ready to pick when they point downwards and I had absolutely no idea. So obviously these ones are pointing upwards but you can see these at the bottom hanging down so looks like they are ready to pick so thank you so much for that tip Jane absolutely love getting tips off of the community I don't know what I'm doing I'm literally just winging it well that's a curly one so when you send me messages tell me what I should be doing it means I don't harvest things too early And I get to take home brilliant broad beans. So these ones here are pointing to the ground. So I'm going to take it that they are ready as well. Unlike those ones there that are pointing up still. Brilliant, genius, thank you. And just to give us all an incredible moment of deja vu, I'm going to pick some more peas again. Now, I thought they were ready last week. And I mean, they were because obviously I ate some, but they are so much bigger this week. <gasps> They're just so perfect. Isn't nature amazing? If you told me two years ago that I'd be in the garden, deliriously happy that I was picking my own peas, I didn't see vegetable growing on my horizon. And yet, I've never felt more content 
than I do now. It's just like pure joy, isn't it? Who'd have thought a handful of pea pods could bring you so much wholesome joy? Now the great thing I found about this salad bowl lettuce is you just take the outside leaves and it sort of comes back as a cut and come again. You don't need to take the whole head. So I literally just take off what I need. So it's super fresh then. So I'll catch you next week. Look after yourselves. Bye.